Welcome to UIC Baseball on the Valley on ESPN. Andre Seda and Connor Klingen with you here in beautiful Chicago, Illinois. No clouds in sight, a beautiful blue sky. A little chilly, but we're going to get some baseball in doubleheader action. Nine innings for each. Connor, what are your thoughts from last night's game to tonight? Well, I think for UIC, just hoping to carry that momentum on. They have a three-game winning streak. They've been playing good baseball. They played really clean baseball yesterday. Only one error, and Brandon Bach looking to keep that going. And a favorable matchup for him, the left-hander. Three of the top four in the lineup for St. Thomas bat from the left side. Chicago, that is warm to us. Next pitch swung on it up the middle. A single for Matthew Mollick to get things started for the St. Thomas Tommies. Hoping for another one here this afternoon. The one, two, breaking ball, got him swinging. First strikeout for Bach. And first out, a little bit over a week. First pitch hit over to the left side. Short stop over to second, a first, not in time. They will get the force out at second. Zelinski to Nagelbach. Nagelbach was unable to throw over to first to Harris in time. So it'll be a 6-4 fielder's choice. Yeah, that one just a little bit too softly hit to turn two there, but a nice job by Zielinski. A tougher play than it looks like. That's kind of that weird angle where you can't quite flip it, so you got to do almost the dart toss there. First pitch to Richards hit right back up the middle. Bach has it, throws over to first, and in time this time for the third out of the inning. Payoff pitch, got him swinging. Out number one, first strikeout for Retz. Yeah, you can see Zelinski's a little bit frustrated with himself there, that pitch out of the zone, but it's tough to lay off that fastball, especially with a full count. And he gave it a good hack, but unfortunately he's down on strikes. Retz sets, he has an 0-2, one out, nobody on the pitch. Breaking ball popped up on the infield. Got shot calling for it, going over to the right side of second base to make the catch for out number two. Retz looks down to his monitor, wearing it on his waistband, as opposed to the classic watch look. Here's the 2-2. Got him looking. Second strikeout for Retz, and UIC goes down in order. No runs, no hits, no errors. After one, we're tied up at zero, going to the top of the second here on the Valley on ESPN Plus. Brad Snyder, he'll be calling balls and strikes. John Coons at third and Dominic Longbucko at first. Here's a 3-1. This one hit into right field, going back on it is Ewell. He camps underneath it and makes a catch about a step or two in front of the warning track for out number one. Working quickly is Bach, here's the 0-2 pitch. Got him looking, three pitches, three strikes, out number two. I loved the pitch mix there from Brandon Bach. He went fastball, breaking ball, and then ends it with another breaking ball for strike three. Just froze Gottschalk. Really nicely done there by the left-hander for the Flames. You know, you do expect to see that 3-2 fastball, but Bach's been able to locate that breaking ball for a strike. We'll see what he goes with. The payoff pitch on the ground over to the second baseman diving as Nagelbach can't get to it it'll roll all the way into right center field rounding second trying to extend that single to a double as Voss dives in and he's safe a great hustle from Voss and again that two out hitting approach he's a perfect 1000 continuing the 1000 approach and takes a single into a double yeah that's really heads up base running there by Voss he, he recognize where A.J. Hankel was playing, actually had him shaded a little bit more towards left field, so it was going to take him a long time to get to that baseball. He was able to get the extra bag out of it. First at bat from a runner in scoring position, looking to bring him in. A check swing, did he go? They're going to appeal. And yes, he did. Three pitches, three strikes again, this time on the swing for out number three. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on base. Still tied at zero. We go to the bottom of the second. Kendall Yule, the right fielder, batting 333 on the year. First pitch swinging over to the shortstop, picked up by Gottschalk, fired over to the first. In time. A 6 3 put out for out number one. UIC making St. Thomas make a lot more pitches than they need to. 
Here's the 2-2. Got him looking on the high outside corner with the breaking ball. Third strikeout for Reitz. No balls, two strikes, two outs. Reitz a strike away from going one, two, three once more. Swung on, fouled, caught by Morris, and another strikeout. That's four strikeouts for Reitz and a consecutive one, two, three inning to start the game for St. Thomas. Going to the top of the third here at UIC. One, two, pitch, swung on and missed for strike three. Fourth strikeout for Bach tonight. One ball, one strike, the pitch. Cleared out into center field. Henkel comes in on it, cams underneath, makes the one-handed grab for out number two. Oh, we saw Von Schlegel go yard yesterday. See, it's this one into center field. That'll be a single. He's on his horse trying to go two, makes the turn, and will think better. And another two-out hit for St. Thomas. One ball. No strikes. Hit on the ground hard over to Nagelbach. He'll go over to second for one. And get the final out. That'll be a 4-6 fielder's choice for out number three. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on base. Bottom of the third coming up next. Tied up here at zero on the Valley on ESPN+. Reds is ready to go. The 2-2. Check swing. Did he go? They're going to say foul tip and was caught by Morris. Impressive work to do that on the forehand while it's coming down. And that's a, another strikeout, strikeout number five for Reds and three strikeouts in a row. Uh, looks like the umpires are getting together to talk about this one. A.J. Taylor's still waiting. Maybe we'll get another opportunity. We'll have to see what they decide ultimately. I was going to say, that was a very impressive grab. That ball went straight down, and they're going to say a foul ball, so it will be 2-2. Two and two. And now I believe Chris O'Lean, head coach for St. Thomas, is going to have a word. <laughs> we have... A chat with John Coons, third base umpire. And Chris Olin, a little heated here. And if you're A.J. Taylor, you want to make the most of this next pitch. Here's the 2-2. Swung on up the middle, and there's the first hit for UIC. And Taylor in the leadoff spot gets a leadoff runner at first. For UIC, it's James Harris showing bunt down the third baseline, charging it as Von Schlegel throwing over to first in time, out number one. Sacrifice bunt, moves a runner, Taylor to second. Reds looks over to second and now fires. This one hit on a line into right field, that'll be a single. Vojevic tosses all the way home. And now runners at the corners and nobody out. The 0-2 pitch. This one hit well into left center field. Going back on it is Voss. Backtracking, makes the catch. Runners will tag, a run will score. And UIC takes a 1-0 lead. The 1-2. Over to the left side, through the gap into left field. Another single for UIC. And another runner in scoring position. Here's the 0-1. This one struck into center field, running back is Voss, chasing after it at the warning track, reaches up, makes the catch as he runs into the wall for out number three. First pitch to Richards, swung on over to the left side. Roberts backing up, now coming in on it, makes the one-handed grab for out number one. Payoff pitch, swung on, fouled, and caught by Bissett behind the plate. Or out number two. A great job by Brandon Bach in this at bat. He was down 3-0 and in the count, and he just said, you know what, I'm just going to fire three straight fastballs here, and it <laughs> results in a strikeout. Here's the 0-2 once again. Hit into center field. Henkel sizing it up and makes a catch for out number three. A 1-2-3 inning for UIC. No runs, no hits, no errors. We go to the bottom of the fourth. UIC leads 1-0. A single and a sack fly. You move the runners 90 feet. Take what you can and need at bat. 
Swung on and missed for strike three. Good breaking ball in the dirt. It changes the game, especially for bunting. This ball ripped into left field. Wraith Peterson thinking of two. Richard picks it up, fires over to second. The cutoff no good and a misfire. And Truckee having to dive over at first base to stop the ball from rolling any further. And it'll be a double for Wraith Peterson. Go, he gets it off in time, but low and away, four, and, four balls. And runners at first and second. And there's a clock violation. The pitch will continue. And into center field for out number three. Two runners on, one hit, no runs. As we go to the top of the fifth, UIC leads 1-0. And there we go back to the fundamentals. A fastball swung on and missed. A strikeout against Joe Voss. Another strikeout for Bach. Doing the little things, doing the, the simplest parts back to the basics of the game. Ben Taxall pops this one over to right field. Ewell underneath makes the catch for out number two. Circle change or a regular change up, because then you can start talking about timing. As this one's hit well into left field, Roberts camps underneath it and makes a catch for out number three. Another one, two, three inning for Bach. No runs, no hits, no errors, and no one left on base. Bottom of the fifth coming up next. UIC leads one nothing. You mentioned it earlier, spring uh, or daylight saving time. I think that's the first kind of like societal sign of spring. This one hit over to first base on the ground. Truckee picks it up and runs over to first. Three unassisted for out number one. 1-0 one -oh pitch on the way to Zane Zelensky, who hits this one into right field. Going back on it is Vojovic. Twisting and turning, and that one hits off the base of the wall. Zelensky goes to second, and that is 14 straight games with a hit for Zane Zelensky. Fog everywhere. Next pitch popped up into center field. Voss was camped and then started running. He makes the catch, however. Out number two. And Jackson Bissett will step in. Uh, that's been instituted either a strike on the hitter or a ball on the pitcher. As he goes down on strike, swinging a low breaking ball for out number three. Again, flirting with that pitch clock. UIC with one hit. No runs, no errors, and one left on base. We go to the top of the six. UIC leads 1-0. Pitching battle between these two of Bach and this one's hit up the middle. And a diving stop, but that's all it will be. A great hustle from Nagelbach to keep it from going into deeper center field. But a single nonetheless for Matthew Mollick. The 0-2. Swung on, past the diving glove of Peterson into left field. Back-to-back -back singles for the Tommies. And that's the second single as well for Von Schlegel. Yeah, usually if you're gonna kind of bunt back that far towards your chest, it's not gonna be a good result. He gets this bunt down, down the third baseline. The throw to first, not in time as he hustles out and the bases are loaded. With the bases loaded and nobody out, it's Briggs Richards. He hits this one up towards second base and through. One run will score. Hankel picks it up and fires to second. Diving into second is Richards. And St. Thomas takes a 2-1 lead. Max Moore steps in. He hits this one into right field. First pitch swinging. You will makes the catch. Tagging are both the runners at second and third. The throw to the plate will not be in time. It'll be cut off by Harris. And St. Thomas extends their lead three to one. Infield is in, the pitch. Swung on and missed and a big strikeout for Bach against Gottschalk as that's out number two. He was able to strike out Boss the last time. Ball shows bunt down the first baseline. It's a race to the bag and he will win that race. Harris came to play it. Nobody covered first. It'll be an RBI single and St. Thomas increases their lead four to one. Well, I think Joe Voss uh, might have heard our conversation earlier. That shows why the bunt can still be such an effective part of the game. And, you know, he pulls Bach and the first baseman there, Harris, up the line, just kind of into no man's land with that bunt, just a really good drag bunt for a base hit. 
First pitch swinging on the ground, a short picked up by Zielinski, flipped over to Nadelwack at second base for out number three, a 6-4 fielder's choice. However, St. Thomas takes a 4-1 to one lead against the UIC Flames on five hits, four runs, no errors, and one left on base. We go to the bottom of the sixth, St. Thomas leads 4-1, to 3-2 pitch on the way. And that hits Ewell. He'll get the free base. Free might be a little bit of a loose term because he does pay a price. A lot better to get hit today than yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit warmer right now than it would have been the middle of the game yesterday, thankfully for Kendall Yule. But right now, I think it's about, we're at 45 degrees. Sun is fully out, but never a good feeling when it's below 50 to get hit by a pitch. Yep. Here's the one-two pitch. A longer pause. Retz. This ball stroked into left field and that'll fall for a single. You will go to second on the A.J. Hinkle single. That's his first hit of the afternoon. Four run lead when the UIC was leading nine to five. This ball's popped up, caught by the third baseman Von Schlegel. And that'll be out number one. The risk reward factor, risk you pop out like that. This one's hit into left center field, going into no man's land, running after it is a shortstop, and he drops it. Gottschalk couldn't make the diving catch, and now runners will be at every base, and bases are loaded. Two balls, two strikes, one out. This one cued off of the end of the bat, a flip over to home, a throw, no throw to first. As Reds will flip it over to the catcher. And honestly, that, that's a saving grace right there for Reds. The pitch. Popped into center field, running back on it is Voss. Camps underneath and Reitz gets out of the bases loaded jam to preserve St. Thomas's 4-1 lead. His last at bat in the fifth. 0-2, hit on a line, a diving stop by Zielinski. He fires over to first in time. What a play by Zane Zielinski. Take a look here on the replay. This ball was hit hard on a line and two bounces, makes the diving stop and throws on his way up. Save that one to the highlight reel. Yeah, that's the defensive play of the weekend so far, Zane Zielinski. This pitch, first one hit over to second base, picked up by Nagelbach over to first in time for out number two and quickly Two outs for Brandon Bach. One, two pitch, two outs. Swung on and missed. That is strikeout number eight for Bach as Von Schlegel goes down on strikes. No runs, no hits, no errors, and no one left on base. A one, two, three inning. As, we, as it is now stretch time, we go to the bottom of the seventh, and whoever was warming up in St. Thomas's bullpen is no longer on the mound as this breaking ball's in there for strike three. Got him looking. Strikeout number seven for Walker Reitz. Yeah, these two pitchers are really just going back and forth. Here's a 2-2. Two -two. Hit into left field. Richards backs up. Makes the catch. Out number two. Bottom of the seventh. Reitz looks to get out of this inning. Hit off the end of the bat. Off of the mound over to Gottschalk. And he bobbles it. And Bissett will get on base. So a runner at first, and Kendall Ewell will come in. Yeah, that's a tough play coming off the mound there. Here's a one-two. On the ground to the third baseman, Von Schlegel picks it up and will go to second for the force out, a 5-4 put out for out number three. No runs, no hits, one error, and one left on base, St. Thomas Leads four to one here on the Valley on ESPN Plus. Single, fielder's choice and grounded over to the shortstop. He pops this ball into left field. Camping underneath it is Roberts for out number one. The pitch. Chopper over to short and it will be Nagelbach as he almost runs into Zelinski. The shift was on, fired over to first in time for out number two. Pitch low and inside one and oh. 
Next pitch ripped down into the gap between third and short into left field. Morris takes a big turn, but he'll stay at first base as Roberts throws it into the infield. And that's Morris's first hit of the afternoon. 0-2 pitch on the way. Swung on into right field on a line. Running to second is Morris. The throw from Ewell will be cut off by the second, or excuse me, the shortstop Zelinski. And now runners are at the corners for St. Thomas. Has at first base. 0-2 pitch. Swung on into left center field. Hankel will camp underneath it and make it the catch for out number three. For St. Thomas, two hits, no runs, no errors, and two left on base. Bottom of the eighth coming up next. Hinkle did hit a single his last time out. One for three. Half-hearted swing right back up to Cruzen. We'll walk over to first, flip it over to Truckee for out number one. As well, very similar to Rhett's taking his time. The next pitch hit off the end of the bat. A bouncer over to Gottschalk at short. Fires over to first in time. Out number two. 4.50 ERA. This one lined through second or short and third into left field. And that'll be a hit for A.J. Taylor, his third of the afternoon. Runner at first. One ball, no strikes, two outs. Harris awaits the 1-0. Runner from first goes to second, throw down from the catcher. Just misses a good jump from Taylor. That'll be a stolen base for AJ. Five for five on the year now. After swiping that back, got a pretty good jump. And that actually made it closer that the throw was a little bit offline as you know the premier league in the world of baseball. So we'll have to see what happens. But for now, I think the bases will just stay the way they are. A four pitch walk to James Harris. Runners now at first and second. And the tying run coming to the plate and Carson Roberts. It's a one, two pitch, two on, first and second and two outs. This one floated into left field. Richards on his horse as well as Gottschalk and that will fall. One run will score. The throw comes in from Gottschalk and an RBI single for UIC and they cut the lead in half, 42. Here's the one, two. Up the middle, and that'll fall in center field. A run will score in James Harris, and St. Thomas leads four to three. UIC making this game more and more interesting as the game goes on. Yeah, second hit of the day for Zelinski. Just takes that breaking ball down low, floats it into center field, and here come the Flames within a run. One, two pitch on the way. Off the end of the bat, grounded over to second. Malik will throw over to first. Does he have it? He does, a little awkward play there by Truck. But it will be an out, a 4-3 put out for out number three. As two runs come across to score on three hits, no errors, and two left on base. UIC comes within one. We go to the top of the ninth. St. Thomas looking for insurance and UIC looking to shut them down. Hoey exits and fires. First pitch popped up on the infield over to Nagelbach. Makes a two-handed grab for out number one. But held to three so far today. 3-0 pitch misses. And a walk for Ben Truckee. He'll move over to first. Batting 500. And they're going to call that strike three. Right at the letters. Malik stepped out of the zone. Thought it was coming towards his head. And a beautiful breaker. Yeah, that high had and tight. After the strikeout looking to Matthew Mollick. Here's a 1 1. Over the head of the second baseman, Nagelbach, and that'll be into left, right center field. Then Truckee hustles his way to third, and now runners on the corners for St. Thomas. Yeah, really good piece of opposite field hitting by Von Schlegel, who has his second hit of the day. I think that's his third. Oh, that, that's right. Yeah, third hit of the day. Yeah, after he had the home run yesterday. Here's the 01. Up the middle, picked up by Zelinski. He'll take it to second himself. Six unassisted for out number three. As UIC down by one, looking to come out victorious and extend their win streak to four straight games. Stick around here on the Valley. And here's the 2 2. 
This one hit well into left center field. Going after it is Richards, and that'll fall and split the outfielders. Rounding first is Bassett, and he'll have a double as the throw comes into the infield. And that's the start you want if you're UIC. Well, Jackson Bissett was 0 for, 0 for 4, and you didn't think they could keep him down for long with the way he's produced this season, and that is just what UIC needed, the leadoff double. And now you've got the tying run in scoring position with nobody out. Bissett at second with the leadoff double in the inning. He represents the tying run. Ewell, the winning run, as he swings and misses on the fastball. Looked a little awkward with that swing, and that's out number one. Yeah, I was just trying to stay alive there, but couldn't catch up to that fastball from Kano. So now it's up to A.J. Henkel. And fires. Got him looking with the fastball again. And St. Thomas is one out away from taking home a W. Yeah, that one just got the outside corner. You can see there Henkel trying to look it down he thought maybe it might have been an inch or two off the plate but Snyder making the call there and the Flames are down to their last out it's up to Rafe Peterson tying run at second two outs winning run at the plate this pitch hit over in the right field Boyovich picks it up fires home the play at the plate not in time UIC ties the game on an RBI double by Rafe Peterson That is clutch hitting right there from Wraith Peterson going the opposite way with it. And I love the send there as well. Sending Bissett home, you know, he is your catcher, but he's got good speed. He showed that yesterday, he scored on a double from first base. You have to force the outfielder and Vojevic to make the big play and the Flames end up tying it. And now a chance to win it. And then another double to Wraith Peterson. This pitch on the ground to third base. Picked up by Von Schlegel, throws over to first in time, and we got extras coming up next. UIC ties it in the bottom of the ninth, four to four. Don't go anywhere, we got more baseball coming up here on the Valley on ESPN. Here's the one, two. Swung on up the middle, shift was on. Peterson will fire over to first in time for out number one. The Morris. Swung on and maybe got a piece of it caught by Bassett either way. Strike three. That's out number two and a great outing for Lawler here in the extra innings. It's a little bit different. 1-1 one, one pitch flared out into left field. And that'll fall as Kay, the new left fielder, replacing Roberts, will toss it into the infield. And there's some life for St. Thomas with two outs, a single, second single for Gottschalk. All our sets and fires to Joe Voss. Runners going. Called strike three. The throw down will not matter, although it looks like it would have beaten Gottschalk. A strikeout looking, and that is the second strikeout for Lawler. One hit, no runs, no errors, and one left on base. We go to the bottom of the 10th as UIC looks for their fourth straight win. One two pitch. Called strike three on the outside part of the plate. We're out number one. Here's the 0-2. Swung on and missed back-to-back -back strikeouts for Kano. That's out number two. Zane Zielinski, obviously we know can hit the ball. He's done it 14 straight games. First pitch swinging, however, into right field. Going back on it is Vujovic at the wall. He leaps and can't make the grab. Hits off the glove. Vujovic throws it in. Zielinski rounding second, going to third. And a triple for Zane Zielinski. Well, he just missed ending the ball game here. We've seen how the baseball's been carrying out to right field. This one ends up one hopping the wall. And Zane Zielinski, he's got wheels in that leadoff spot easily into third base, standing up. And now the winning run 90 feet away for the Flames. Scoring two runs in the eighth, a tying run in the ninth, and now the winning run is on third. A chopper over to first, picked up by Truckee. A race to the bag, and he'll get there in time to keep us in extras. We go to the top of the 11th, tied up four to four. UIC with a big shot from Zielinski all the way to third, but they strand him there. Top of the 11th coming up next here on the Valley on ESPN. It was the one, two pitch from Lawler. Swung on and missed. A drop third strike, Bissett will tag Taxtall to clean things up. And that's out number one. 
That was just nasty there from Reese Lawler. I mean, this one just drops off the table. Looks like it's in the zone. Nope, not even close there. And Taxstall looking foolish there. Reese Lawler really impressive on the curveball. Why not? <laughs> This pitch popped up on the infield, now going towards the outfield. Nagelbach tracking it. Camps underneath, makes a two-ended grab in shallow right center field for out number two. Third or fourth inning in game two. It's the first pitch sawed off on the inside part of the plate towards third base, and Peterson's there. Making a little bit of a jazz square before making the catch for out number three. One, two, three inning, no runs, no hits, no errors. No one left on base, and UIC again Looking to take a win here in the bottom of the tenth or bottom of the eleventh, excuse me, here on the Valley on ESPN Plus. Yeah, three and zero count in a tie game at extras. Three one pitch hit well into right center field. This one's going back, bounces and off the wall. Bassett rounding second, going to third. Here comes the relay throw. The play at third. He's safe. A lead off triple. Jackson Bassett. 90 feet away as the explosion celebration at third hits this one into right center field and UIC another chance to win it. All right, Jackson Bissett, he is just seeing the baseball so well, crushes this one, was surprised to see the send to third, but he does make it in time. He's got wheels for a catcher, no question about it. Remember, he was also sent from second base to home on that game tying run. First pitch swinging into the gap and through! UIC walks it off in the bottom of the 11th. A 5-4 victory over the University of St. Thomas. Kendall Ewell with the RBI walk-off single through the infield to give UIC their fourth consecutive win against St. Thomas.